Good afternoon. I'm Charles Lejano. This is One News Now. Following the go signal from the government, local airlines are expected to resume operations today. Let's check out the situation with Gerard de la Peña. He's reporting live from the NAIA. Gerard, how many flights are scheduled to uh, uh, take place today? Charles, five domestic flights are pushing through today after the IETF allowed the resumption of airlines' domestic operations. These flights, Charles, are going to Cagayan de Oro, General Santos City, and Naga City. There was also a flight scheduled uh, today uh, coming from Jensen back to Manila. All of these are operated by Cebu Pacific. Air Asia, meanwhile, will resume operations on Friday, June 5, with flights going to Cebu and Cagayan de Oro. It will start flying to Davao on June 8 and to Puerto Princesa on June 11. Same goes for flag carrier Philippine Airlines, which will start domestic operations on Friday with flights to Cebu. It will also resume flights to Tagbilaran on June 7. Flights to Davao, Lawag, and Tacloban, among many others, will resume on June 8. It can be recalled that the three big local carriers in the country originally scheduled the resumption of flights on June 1 as Metro Manila shifted to GCQ. But the Civil Aeronautics Board asked them to hold off their flights and wait for the IATF's approval. There was a bit of confusion on the guidelines. That's why Cebu Pacific was forced to cancel its Jensan flight yesterday. Some of the passengers, however, were able to fly yesterday through a special repatriation flight. Over at the airport, a number of passengers came without a booking and tried their luck if they can fly today. There was also a couple who came here and said they were not informed that their Air Asia flight was cancelled. The Metro Manila, the Manila International Airport said authority said it has prepared the terminals to ensure physical distancing uh, with a gradual increase of passengers. The agency has likewise warned that passengers should expect glitches and changes to their flights because the situation is new for airline authorities. They also advised passengers to come to the airport not earlier than three hours before their flight to avoid crowding inside the terminal. Charles, the last flight for today is at um, uh, 3 p.m. and that's going to Cagayan de Oro. Passengers may call the airlines for the availability and schedules of their flights and uh, they are also reminded to double check with the local government units of their destinations on the specific requirements that they may have to in order to avoid uh, in any inconvenience. These requirements are normally uh, medical certificates and travel passes. Charles. Right, Gerard, thanks for that. Uh, just to clarify, uh, just to set the record straight, rather, sino lang yung papayaga nating uh, pinapayaga lumipad sa airport? Are we just talking about stranded passengers returning OFWs? Well, Charles, napansin natin dito sa airport, most of the travelers are really stranded passengers. Well, practically everyone's allowed to travel as long as the purpose of their travel is not related to leisure. Um, anyway, ang sinabi ng mga airline operators, wala rin naman daw mapupuntahan at walang mapapasyalan at this time because of the prevailing uh, quarantine in various provinces. But uh, practically everyone can travel as long as the purpose is non-leisure. Charles. All right, thank you. Gerard de la Peña reporting live from the NAIA. Here are other stories we are keeping our eyes on. Land Bank of the Philippines is rolling out a 3 billion peso lending program for private schools to help fund the Study Now, Pay Later scheme. The bank's president and CEO, Cecilia Borromeo, says loans under the initiative carry an interest rate of 3% per annum and is payable in three years. The House of Representatives is expected to tackle the anti-terrorism bill on third and final reading later today. If passed, the bill would no longer need to go through the lengthy bicameral conference committee hearings as congressmen have adopted the Senate's version. Instead, the measure will be, straight, will be sent straight to Malacanang for President Duterte's signature. And over in the U.S., a Washington, D.C. resident allowed more than 50 protesters to take shelter in his home to protect them from being arrested for violating the city's curfew. Rahul Dabi says a police line was about two houses away when he encouraged people to come inside. The D.C. government has imposed a 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew in response to the protests against police brutality. For more updates, follow News 5, The Philippine Star, and Business World Online. I'm Charles Lejano. We are One News.